Hello and welcome to Scott TV, the first Scottish opinionated channel on YouTube. Scotland is just about to introduce Universal Basic Income Pilot Scheme in Fife and Glasgow. To many, it's just a way to failure the national economy. To others, it's a solution to fight the poverty. It sounds utopian, but giving an equal amount of money to people because they are citizens allows people to raise their children, start families and focus on education. Each year, people lose jobs due to automation. UBI can tackle this issue, but experts say universal basic income will create a huge gap between rich and poor, employed and unemployed, educated and uneducated. Alaska has had UBI since 1982, Canada tried and it didn't work. Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban said no to UBI, it works in Finland and other Scandinavian countries. France will introduce UBI. Are we just about to witness a revolution? Let's talk to Professor Carl Witherquist from Georgetown University, political philosopher and economist, co-founder of Universal Basic Income Network in the United States. Welcome, Carl. Thank you for joining us today on Scott TV. Uh, let's talk about uh, universal basic income. Are you not sending this simple message to people? This is your easy money. You get us every month, no matter what. How you can encourage people to find jobs and go to work, go out and, and earn money. Oh, encouraging people to find jobs is very easy. What you do is you offer them money. You offer them a good wage instead of a really bad wage. People will do good things to you if you offer enough. So this whole idea that, oh, oh, we, we can't have basic income because no one will work, it really is just a complaint that, oh, we want to pay really low wages because we don't want to pay the wages that will get people to work when we have basic income. And isn't it funny when you think of it that way? Because whenever people talk about this, whenever, when, whenever people talk about someone who's potentially looking for a job and maybe isn't going to take it, we always talk about that person being a lazy worker. Um, but whenever someone is maybe going to take a job, an employer is offering a job and a worker doesn't take it, the worker is saying that job is not good enough for the money, or that job is not good enough for the working conditions. Maybe the working conditions are too low and the wages are too poor and the wage is too low. Maybe this person shouldn't take it. Maybe the problem here is not a lazy worker. Maybe the problem is a cheap employer. But notice how we always say lazy workers, lazy workers, lazy workers. We never say cheap employers. Well, uh, I think we have to realize that employment is a two-way street and threatening people with severe destitution, homelessness, poverty, uh, malnutrition is not uh, the way a free society gets people to work. A free society gets free people to work who aren't threatened with, uh, with complete destitution by offering them good jobs with good working conditions and good wages. And so plenty of room with all those great luxuries that our market system produces there's plenty of room to get everybody to work just offer them enough money and they'll work and america when they tried ubi many many years ago uh, the divorces actually increased the level of divorces increased because by giving people easy money was just leaving mothers with with, with with children on their own. 
Well, uh, if you're talking about the negative income tax mm -hmm. experiments of the 1970s, um, the, uh, uh, the, to, to the extent that it's true that there was an increase in the divorce rate, um, it was not caused by men increasingly leaving their wives, because basic income, I'll get to that in a minute, basic income does not give men any more incentive to leave their wives than anything else does. It, 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 if anything, it's the reverse. Um, it was women uh, with children who were leaving their husbands. So what you find, uh, especially, in, and, and this is called the, uh, the independence effect, what you have is, um, what, you, what you had in the situations is women who, and children who were very dependent on their husband's income, who uh, so the, the husband made the money, and this is, of course, we're talking the 1960s and 70s, where this was uh, we, the, the sexual division of the labor force was even much worse than it is now. Uh, and uh, uh, and you had women who were dependent on their husband, and then you have uh, you have. Um, uh, something like a basic income in place where women can actually raise their children without being dependent on their husband's income. And some women took advantage of this and left. Now, why would they do that? Does a woman who, uh, the woman doesn't get more for doing this. The woman loses access to the husband's income by doing this. Um, and they, they would retain their access to the negative income tax by staying with the husband. So there's not really a financial gain for the woman. All it has done is made it possible for a woman who used to be financially independent to leave her husband. So now she still is much worse off financially leaving her husband, but she's not completely destitute. And now she's doing it. Now, why would a woman do that? Well, a really selfish woman wouldn't do that. Um, a, what would, you would have is a woman who already wanted to leave her husband and couldn't afford to leave her husband. Um, that is the woman, that is, and that is what the evidence shows. That's, and even if you, look at the, the, if you look at the researchers who looked at that, that's what the evidence shows. Um, that that uh, even though even the researchers who who found that said the independence effect is the explanation for divorces going up. But now we got to think: is uh, not all divorces are created equal? Um, and I'm not sure all divorces are completely bad. If you have a woman and children who are only with a husband because they're financially dependent on him and will face poverty and destitution if they leave him and would otherwise really like to leave him, do you really want to make her stay with that husband? Is it a really good idea to keep divorces down by making women financially dependent on men? Personally, I think that's a horrible idea. That is, we want to make women unfree. That's saying we want to make women unfree um, to leave their husbands because that will get more divorces, that gives men power. That gives men power to be financially selfish with their, with their wives and children. It gives them the power to be abusive with their wives and children. Um, it gives, um, it, it gives uh, uh, women incentives not to leave a father who's an alcoholic or something like that. It's not a good idea to make women financially dependent on men. And if you think it's a good idea, then, uh, then we should go beyond just not having basic income. We should make a law that women are not allowed to work.